all right we're back and we're talking about cross validation and we're so we've got we're looking at k fold in particular k fold cross validation and we started out so we were talking about how we wanted to minimize this expected loss but we don't know the true distribution p so we can't compute this thing but what we're going to do is try to estimate it so we're going to try to estimate this expected loss this error epsilon m for each of the models in our model class, one up through C, finite model class, and we're going to do it in the following way. So we, we took our data D, and for illustration purposes, well, let's suppose that we had 100 points in it, we randomly permuted it, we split it into these K equally sized parts, or roughly equally sized parts, and here we were assuming, you know, for illustration purposes, we were assuming k equals 5 just just you know to make things nice and concrete but in general this could be some arbitrary integer k well it has to be less than n i guess and and then we were looking at we were constructing we were writing down this matrix to, to visualize the cross validation process so the process is the following so here's what we're going to do for each M, you know, and this is for each M from 1 to C, for each of our models in our model class, we're going to, we're going to train it using only, for, so for the first round, for round 1, for a particular M, we're going to train it on folds 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we're going to take all these, all these, and, and lump them all together into one big one training set. So if n was 100, this has 80 points. And then we're going to evaluate it on the validation set, which for round one is fold one. So we get, for some m, we get some estimate. Let's call it epsilon hat sub m of one, where so it's it's for the mth model, and it's one because it's for the first round. And then we forget everything from the first round, and for the second round, we start over. We we say, okay, we have we're looking at model M, and we're going to take now fold one, and lump it all together with folds three, four, and five, and we'll use that as our as our training set. We'll we'll construct a prediction function or classifier or regression function or whatever using that as our training set, folds 1, 3, 4, and 5, and then we'll evaluate it on fold 2. So, so that's for round 2, and that gives us epsilon hat sub m of 2. And then we do the same thing for 3, 4, and 5. We get epsilon hat m 3, 4, and 5. And then we put all these together we average them all up together into epsilon hat m and that's just the average so it's 1 over k times the sum as i goes from 1 to k epsilon hat m of i just the average of each of these so it's averaging the 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 error the empirical error on each of these different rounds And then the last step in the process, step four, we choose M to minimize minimize epsilon hat M. So you choose the model in your model class that has the smallest estimated error. So this gives you an estimate of this this error, right? This was epsilon hat m, this is an, and this is an estimate of epsilon m, the true error. And that is cross validation. Oh, and I guess well, there's one more step. So you would choose m to minimize this, and then for your final thing, you would retrain retrain using m maybe this is like we call this m star is the minimizer 
and we would retrain using M star on all of D. So we would get our final classifier or, or, or prediction function by using the best model and we would, you know, training it on all of the data. And that's, that's cross-validation. So one question here, one thing which we haven't really talked about, is how do you choose k? What is the good value of k? Well, so I'll come back to it a little bit. A little bit later we'll talk about how, what, what is a good value of k. Often, let me just say at this point, oftentimes people use either 5 or 10 for k. But another very popular choice is to use, so that's the end of, that's the end of cross-validation, the general setup, the general thing. But another, rather than using 5 or 10 for k, a popular choice, so we had a, remember this was, so A was validation, Just we just took one split. B was cross-validation, or K-fold cross-validation, and that was we took these, 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 each of these K different splits, and we, we evaluated on each of them. And now for a third option, well, it's really, I guess, a special case of B, special case of cross-validation, is leave one out cross-validation. Leave one out cross-validation. And this is just k-fold cross-validation when k equals n, little n. k equals the number of points. So what is this doing? This is doing, right, so that we've got back up to our data here. So for leave one out cross-validation, each point itself is a fold, so we have n folds. Each point is one fold, so at, at the first step, and in the first round, we're going to have n rounds. In the first round, we train on, well, I guess, we, you know, we permute everything first, but it, actually for leave one out, it doesn't even matter, so you don't need to permute. But, so we would take the first one as our, as a validation set in round one, we would train model M on all of the rest, you know, 2 through n, evaluate it on this one, and that would give us our, our first, you know, epsilon hat 1, uh, epsilon hat m of 1, and then, you know, we would take the second one, so I think you get the point, you see the idea. So you take k equals n. So you have n folds. Each point is a fold. And that's leave one out cross validation, sometimes fairly popular choice. So let me tell you about one more, one more option along these lines, D, which is closely related, and this would be random subsamples. And for this type of method, for this type of cross-validation, I don't know if it, I don't know if you really call it cross-validation, it's a little bit, it's really a little kind of different. You again have a sequence of rounds, so we have round, round, one, two, three, four, and so on, up to some, I don't know, capital R number of rounds. And in each round, so in the first round, you choose a random subset, just like the name suggests, you choose a random subset of size, let's say, size S. So S is a parameter here, so you have, before in K, in K fold cross validation, we had this one parameter, we had the parameter K. Of course, I mean, there's all the parameters in your, in your model and everything, but for the procedure, the, the model selection procedure, there was this parameter K. And now for random subsamples, we have the S parameter and we have the R parameter. How many rounds we're going to do and how big each subset's going to be. So in round one, we would choose a subset of size s and take that as our as our validation set and the rest as our training set and then it's just like just like before you get some you know some for each m you get some number epsilon hat m of 1 
and then you, the second round, you choose a different random subset, subset of size s. You get epsilon hat m of 2, and so on, up to epsilon hat m of, n, of r, or of r, right? And then you just average those like before, and you get your, your estimate of the error. And that's called the random subsamples method. So let me briefly say uh, a comparison between random subsamples versus cross validation, pros and cons. In cross validation, one advantage to it is that you're using each, so each point here is used for validation an equal number of times. In fact, it's used, used exactly one time. Each point is used exactly one time for validation. So it's sort of, you know, it's sort of evenly, equally distributed according to, you know, maybe if one, maybe if there was like a super hard point, maybe this one was like super hard, point, I don't know, 19, was super hard, you're only evaluating, you're only testing one time on that. But down here, in the random subsamples, you know, if you, like here, if I choose chose this point twice, maybe this was that hard point 19, and I was, I was, that was part of my validation set in, in these rounds, I could choose, I might end up, by chance, choosing that a bunch of times, and then I would have a sort of, I would be overestimating my error if I did poorly on that, that hard point. So that's something which is maybe, maybe more attractive about cross-validation. But a disadvantage of cross-validation is that you can only do, the, you know, the number of rounds you do is equal to the number of folds, and each fold, like if I did, you know, if I have k folds, like if I, then, it, then I have to divide my training, my, I have to di divide my whole set, d, into k equally sized parts. So, you know, it sort of it sort of uh, introduces this strange dependency between the number of folds, you know, the size of my training and validation sets in each round, and the number of rounds. Whereas we might want to choose maybe a you know a smaller training set and val larger validation set, or a larger val larger training set and smaller validation set, and have a different number, maybe have more rounds in order to get a better estimate of the the error here. And so that's an advantage of the random subsamples method is that you can choose these independently. You can choose the size of each of your validation sets and you can also choose the number of rounds. So that's that's a nice thing. But you know just like I, I mentioned before there's you know there's this sort of dependency between the different rounds because you could you know of course, the whole thing is always the same, the same set. So you're going to be reusing certain points multiple times, or for training, and reusing them multiple times for validation in the random subsamples thing. So it, so there's this sort of, also there's this sort of strange dependency there, which does not show up in, in cross validation because each point is only validated. You're only testing; it's only part of the validation set one time. So you're only testing it one time on each point. Okay, so that was a little little comparison between these two and introduction to these these main different types of cross validation. And uh, I have to stop there because I'm running out of time. But I do want to tell you how to choose k for cross validation. So we'll come back to that and we'll talk also about a couple other issues associated with cross validation. Okay, we'll be back in a minute.